Monster, <laughs> Eileen Lee Warnos. Yes. Of Lee. the movie starring Charlie's Theron. Yeah. Probably butchered them. So I watched this one, and she had some mitigating circumstances, didn't she? Yeah. I um, it, This is one of the cases that really upset me. Um, initially, I wrote a chapter in a book, one of my bestsellers called um, Talk of Serial Killers. I did a chapter, and I started to research it. And then I think I might have mentioned this last time to you, Shauna. It was like a bottle of whiskey time. I just can't get my head around this. Um <laughs> This girl's had a terrible childhood. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. You know, she was born on the wrong side of the tracks, and it, yeah. it, it was the most awful childhood. Terrific, yeah. And, uh, and, I, I, and I got really upset, and then I had to sort of stop and think, is this a man-woman's thing? Because I don't get like this over guys. Is it because she's a woman and I'm, my head's all up the creek? But the more I, I did this chapter, and then all of a sudden, my publishers come to me and saying, Chris, they want to make a film called monster on with Charlie's Theron because you do the book and I said well you, he said you know you've done a lot of work on it to do the film so they go hand in hand and um, I said yeah how long have I got a year or two years he said no 30 days no pressure <laughs> no pressure I did it in 24 <laughs> but um, going back to the movie it's not a long movie uh, it doesn't touch on her childhood, on on Lee's childhood at all, um, for very good reasons, because I don't think it's necessary. From my point of view, I, I look at it and I think, well, that's not the right car in that accident. or it's. But in the time span that they made the movie and Charlie Theron's acting... It's first class. It's a must-watch film. Yeah, definitely. I enjoyed it. it so it, it portrays the horrific things that happened to her when she was involved in sex work. What happened to her when she was a child? Um, well, um, her, her, her father was uh, a paedophile rapist who hung mm. himself while he was in prison. So he um, abused her, her own he, father. More than likely, uh, no evidence that he did, but I wouldn't be surprised. Then um, he, 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 her mother dumped her on her grandparents, on the grandparents. Uh, the father was a brutal man. Uh, you know, what goes on behind closed doors and shuttered windows? Um, and he used to beat her when she was nine, eight, with a leather belt. You come home, take your leather belt off, make her polish it and, and clean it, then lay her over a table naked and thrash her. Abused her, beat her up. Poor little kid. She got pregnant at a very early age, hanging around with kids. Um, put her in an unmarried mum's home. When she went home, a, a f grandfather made her sleep out in the snow in an old car. Um, this was an evil man. <coughs> and... Um, Anyway, she went on the on the road, on the land, whatever they call it, and um pretty little thing, pretty little thing, little blonde, gingham skirt, you know, but she was streetwise. She got it and she started going to pool halls and she was a tough little cookie. Anybody upset? I mean, one pool room she went to, they she was drinking heavily and the, and the, one of the customers said, Look, I've had a row and the owner of the bar said, Out to her, get out and Next minute, somebody shouted, duck, and she threw a pool, pool ball at him so hard. He ducked, and it embedded in the wall. But she was on, She was always committing petty crimes and stuff like that, and then she washed up in Florida, um, you know, and then she met um, Taria Moore, uh, a gay girl, a lesbian, and, um, and Lee, Lee became very attached to her. Uh, she'd do anything for Taria. And, and and this is why I've always argued that, and I'm now getting a lot of support from psychologists and psychiatrists, um, that Lee wasn't a psychopath, funny enough. She was capable of genuine love. A, ge a real psychopath isn't. And they, she adored, and she went, Lee went with some 200 guys as an interstate hooker. And she killed six or seven 
I think it's seven. And you ask yourself, why, why seven? And when her trial came up, a lot of her clients risked their family lives and reputations to go, wanted to go to court and say, look, she was a good girl. You paid your money. She did the business. And that was it. Why six or seven guys that she killed? She shot them. They beat the hell out of her. They ordered a strip. They did try to rape her, not pay her money. And here's this streetwise girl. She's got a six-shot revolver. Bang. That's it. Took their money. Two, one. Well, that's it. We've got it. Was she bisexual then? Yes. Yeah. But leaning more towards uh, being a lesbian, but she obviously slept with guys. But that's more. that was purely business. So who was the first person she killed and why? I think it was uh, now, what's his name? Um, Mallory, Richard Mallory. Uh, he was from the other side of the state. Um, a womanizer had a TV repair business, a drunk, uh, two cars, was known to visit the local bars in, I think it was in Tampa, if I'm not sure, I think it was Tampa. Uh, he used prostitutes, he beat them up, he had a history. But every now and then he travelled across the state. And on one trip, he he saw Lee thumbing or on a freeway. And he, he said, do you want to we'll get some beers and want we'll have some fun on the way? But then he started to beat on her. And he was a nasty man. And that set her off and she shot him. Lee Mallory. And what is Lee doing now? And what about her lover? What happened to her? Uh, um, that's another tragic thing about this case. Um, I mean, I, I did a lot of stuff down with the FDLE, which is the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. I interviewed a lot of the cops down there. Um, Lee got caught. Uh, Tareer Moore ran off. <coughs> <coughs> Tareer Moore was definitely involved in one of the murders. Um, the police didn't bother about her. They got her to grass Lee up. Um, Lee protected her to the very end. Um, and the cops did what they normally do down in those sort of places. They sold the stories, they bullshit stories. They all got nice houses, big cars. One of the guys I interviewed was Captain Binnegar, uh, bumptious tosser. Um, yeah, well, we did. We sold. We made a lot of money out of her story. We did this. We did that. Uh, got a new car. Uh, assholes. So was she death penalty? She got lethal injection. Yeah. Did she have a smart ass remark before she went? Before before she died, did she say something? Yeah, something about going to another planet and she'd come back again one day. I can't okay. remember exactly what she said. <laughs> Do you know what she was? A, she was okay. Yeah. Basically, you get the impression that when you read about her and you talk, you know, you look stuff about her, you know, she looks evil. Um, but inside, she had a heart of gold. She was a good girl. She was streetwise and a terrible childhood, and basically, she was a good kid. And I think what they did to her was a, another absolute disgrace. Killing her. 